drive. So walk the vehicle, I'm gonna make sure there's no leaks under the truck, any coolant, oil, uh, power steering, any fluids on the vehicle would draw my eye. I'm gonna check the actual lights on top of the cab are all proper color amber, they're not cracked or faded at all, and there's no moisture inside. Check for operation when I do my light check. I'm gonna check my front headlights here, they should not be falling out of the truck, should be securely mounted. No cracks in the lenses, no fading, no fogginess, no moisture inside. And of course, make sure the uh, side reflectors, proper color amber, are not faded or cracked at all. all right, I'll check for light operation of lights in a little bit. Of course, I need body damage, bumpers falling off, anything like that. I bring my boss's attention so I don't get blamed for it. You're walking in front of the camera. I'm going to start on the passenger side first, so anything unique or, unique or different on this side. So they come up, I'll be checking all the hoses on this side, make sure there's no leaks in any of the hoses, no clamps are missing, all the hoses are nicely secured, there's no bubbles, no cuts, no dry around the hoses, like I said, no leaking, and all the clamps are in place. I'm going to check the coolant bottle, I got, print, I got coolant in there, it's to the actual mark where it says minimum, so we're good, you could probably put a little more in. Be checking all the wires as well, no frayed wires, cut wires, any loose wires, no leaks anywhere on the engine of any coolant, diesel, or oil anywhere. I'm gonna check the actual uh, alternator here. It is well secured to the vehicle with all its nuts and bolts. It's nice and tight. The wires are attached securely. There's no loose wires or exposed or cut wires. It is belt driven. I'm gonna check that belt, make sure it's not cut, frayed, dry rotted, any kind of fibers coming off of it. And it, and it moves between a half to three quarters for my play. Back in here, I have my water pump. Water pump should not be leaking at all. I shouldn't have any uh, bolts missing. It is belt driven, because I see the pulley right here. And uh, I would check that belt the same way as I check the alternator belt. Since I do have a full form here, I'll be checking the exhaust manifold here, back behind. Make sure the exhaust manifold is securely mounted to the actual engine. There's no uh, cracks in it or soot leaks indicating I could have a leak of the exhaust and kill me and I'm gonna check the clamps from the exhaust all the way back as far as I can go. And I can check that exhaust all the way through and check the exhaust piping, all the clamps are in place. It's all tight and secure, no holes in it, no uh, cracks, no soot leaks. The heat shield is in place, nice and tight to the cab. It's not loose and I do have some kind of uh, bend or rain cap to keep the rain out. I'm gonna head over to the driver's side. Now, as I start on this side, I'll be checking all the clamps again and all the hoses, all the clamps are in place, no hoses are rubbing on anything, no clamps are missing, no holes in any of the connections, no leaks anywhere in the engine of diesel, oil, or coolant anywhere. If I saw a leak, it would draw my eye. Of course, I come down to check the power steering level itself. I see it's in the full mark here with the translucent cap. If I didn't have that, I'd pull the cap off and check the level on the stick, make sure it's between the added full mark. I'm going to check all the power steering hoses here. All the hose clamps are in place. No hose clamps are missing. No leaks from any of the connections. The hoses are not rubbing on anything. And I'll check that all the way down the power steering pump down here. Make sure the power steering pump is connected to the truck properly. All its nuts and bolts not loose, not leaking from any connections itself. And it is gear driven, by the way. It's powered by the gear system. In front of that, I have the air compressor here. The air compressor starts here and it goes all the way down. I'm going to check for any coolant leaks here at the hoses, any oil leaks from the actual air compressor itself. It is securely mounted to the truck, and by the way, it is gear driven the same way as the power steering pump. I will check the actual oil dipstick. You pull it out, and I'll check sure, make sure the oil is between the add of full marks. If I need oil, put oil in it. And of course, it should be a milky color like a coffee cone de HA means you have water in the oil, which is not very good. As they come through, like I said, scanning for any leaks throughout the whole engine itself. If anything possibly leaking, get it fixed. As they come down to my power steering box, I make sure the box is securely mounted, all its nuts and bolts and hardware. No nuts are, are missing at all, none look loose by any rust trails possibly or any shavings. The power steering box is not cracked at all, and the seals are in place on the here in the gasket, and none of the connections are leaking at all. As I come down, I'll check the pipping arm to the drag link the steering knuckle down to the steering arm and down to the tie rod. Make sure all these connections are tight with their castle nuts and cotter pins. There's no uh, cracks or uh, bends to the actual, all the components themselves. Like I said, all the castle nuts and cotter pins are in place nice and tight and all the connections. And the grease boots are not ripped or torn anywhere here. 
But I do have a ripped uh, grease boot here, which we found the other day. Ripped grease boot, which is not good, so we have to have that replaced so the, the steering does not come apart. As I get into the suspension itself, I'm gonna check the spring hanger, which is this big unit going under the box. Some are a little different shape depending on the tractor. The spring uh, hanger itself, no cracks to it. All the uh, bolts and nuts are in place, holding the hanger to the frame, and none of them look loose or missing at all. And I would check that leaf spring, and of course I had the rear hanger as well. I would check that the same way as the front hanger. And of course on the bottom of the rear hanger I have the shackle. The shackle should be nicely bolted in place and the actual bushing should not be deteriorated, cracked, rotten, coming out, all the good stuff. Check the leaf springs itself. Leaf springs should be on top of each other, stacked up on top, not misaligned. No leaf spring should be cracked and no leaf spring should be missing. And if I did have a missing leaf spring, that could affect my U-bolts next. Those should be all nice and tight, not moving at all. No visible signs of looseness and of course, you know, cracked at all. And of course, I'll look on the bottom here and make sure all the nuts are nice and tight to the axle plate that indicate maybe I could have a loose U-bolt. I do have the shock absorber standing right here. The shock absorber is securely mounted at top and bottom of the tractor. The bolts are all in place. The shock absorber is not leaking at all. And of course, the, all the rubber bushings between the bolts and the shock are in place, not deteriorated, cracked, or falling out. As I come in, I'll go right to my brake hose. The brake hose itself should not be kinked, cut, dry rotted, should not be wearing, rubbing on it, indicating I could have a hole soon. I would check that brake chamber and hose for any leaks if I were to have an air in the system and put my foot on the brake pedal. I'd be able to check for leaks coming out of that hose and chamber. Now I would check the chamber, make sure it's not uh, loose, it's nice and secured to the chassis. The chamber itself is not cracked or bent and the clamps in place holding the brake chamber all together. Coming out of that brake chamber, we have the push rod. The push rod, I don't, can't see much of it, but I've seen more of it. It should not be bent or cracked in any way, as well as the slack adjuster. Both of them should have their proper pins, the, the clevis pin and cotter pin holding them together. The slack adjuster should be well greased, and when you pull on that slack adjuster, it should move one inch, no more, no less. One inch of play. Down here are my brake linings and brake drums. I have my brake lining here. The brake lining should be not dangerously thin or no less than a quarter inch. There should be no contamination on my brake linings or drum for maybe an inner seal leak from the hub. And of course, the actual brake drum itself should not be cracked or chunks missing from the brake drum itself. As I come into my tire, I'll check the tire all the way around, inside and outside, and all the way around for any cracks, any chunks missing, any foreign objects inside, any bubbles on the tire, any excessive dry rot. With that condition, I'll be checking my valve stem here, make sure it's nice and tight, and it is. It does have a valve stem cap, A plus for that. I'll check, make sure I have no less than 430 seconds of tread depth on this tire, and I can see I do because the wear bar indicator here, but make sure the tire is completely evenly worn. If I have un even wear due to problems with the vehicle or air pressure. Of course, check to take my air gauge. I'll take my valve stem cap off, and I'll take my pressure gauge, and I'll stick the tire, check my proper air pressure, which we use 100 pounds here. Wherever your company specifies, that's what you would use. I'm gonna check the rim inside and out, make sure the rim itself is not cracked. There's no dents to the rim. Uh, there's no been illegal welds on the rim that you can see. I'm gonna take my one of my lug caps off and check all 10 lug nuts are in place. Lug nut itself is not cracked. There's no radiating cracks from the lug nuts. There's no rush trails leading away from or lines leading away from the lug nut, indicating one could be loose. And of course, if I can see the holes, there'd be no oblong holes in the rim itself. As I check my hub here, I have all the bolts in place. I don't see any leakage at all from the hub, no oil leaking out of it. I can see right here my oil level on the hub. I do have plenty of oil inside that hub for proper lubrication of my bearings. I'm gonna check the actual mirror brackets. I'm small, so I gotta stand up on top. I mean, short, I'm not small, but. I'm going to check the actual brackets themselves are nice and tight. Now the bolts are missing, nothing's loose. The mirrors themselves are nice and tight. They, if they were loose, I'd tighten them up. Make sure they're clean, no cracks in the mirrors, and they're, of course, nice reflective, meaning there's no uh, fogginess or delamination of the mirror. Check my lens here, it's proper color amber, not cracked or faded, no water inside. We'll check for operation in a little bit. The door itself, make sure it's uh, being held up by the hinges. It is, it's not sagging at all. The door opens and closes properly. All the handles inside and outside work. And all the windows go up and down freely. And of course, I do have my weather strip, weather seals, gasket, whatever you want to call it, going around the door. So I check my steps here. 
in the fuel tank. They all should be nice and secure. The tank is secure with all its nuts and bolts. The straps are in place with the rubber. I don't see any leaks from the actual connections of the tank or any damage or holes, I mean, as far as cracks or punctures of the tank. I'm not leaking from the cap, and the cap is nice and tight, creating a good seal. Of course, you don't see any leaks underneath as well. I come to this actual uh, cat, uh, catwalk and steps, make sure the steps are secure, as well as the catwalk nice and tight. There's nothing on these that will let me slip or fall of grease, oil, or ice here in the northern countries. I'm going to check the complete frame down the whole vehicle. The frame should not be sagging, uh, cracked, any illegal welds. All the cross members are in place. You can see them all going down the vehicle itself because all the bolts are in place, keeping the frame nice and straight and strong. Underneath there, I have the drive shaft in the middle of the truck. The drive shaft should not be bent or cracked in any way, cracked at the welds, should not be twisted. And within all the U-joint connections, I have a couple of them there because it's a double shaft. All the U-joints, the bolts are all there. There's no debris tied up in the U-joints themselves. I got my death tank here. It's nice and secure, kind of moving it all. All the uh, rubbers are in place, holding the straps, holding it there. There's no cracks in the plastic tank. And I would check for level if I could, but it's can't really see in there. So I'll check the gauge to make sure I have death fluid inside. As I come down, I'll be checking my spring hangers. I have a front hanger and a rear hanger. Same as the front, not cracks in the hangers. All the bolts are in place, securely mounting it to the frame. No loose or missing bolts or rust trails coming away. Any key that could have a loose bolt. Of course, cracks to it. These are unique to the difference in the front. I have a torque arm on both sides. I'm gonna make sure torque arms are not bent or cracked in any way. They're well secured to the hanger to the and to the axle back here with their nuts and bolts. And if I can see the bushings in here, I would make sure the bushings are not squeezing out, rotted, deteriorated, chunks missing, all that. I got my leaf springs, a lot more in the rear than I do in the front. Make sure they're all stacked on top of each other. There's no misaligned springs whatsoever. There's no crack springs or any missing springs. As I get to my tires, I have two tires back here, dual units. So I'm gonna check between those and make sure my bud spacing is, don't have any daylight between the bud spacing. And of course, no objects in between the tires of chalks, uh, rocks, skulls, babies, homeless people, things like that you run over. Check the tires themselves, make sure they're no less than 230 seconds of tread depth now. Make sure they're all within the spec of the 230 seconds and higher. If they're less, I would get the tires replaced. Of course, condition, same as the front. Cuts, bulges, dry rot, objects inside the tire, hernias on the tire. And of course, we'll check the inflation and the valve stem of both tires. Make sure the valve stems are nice and tight. These do not have valve stem caps. And make sure I have proper inflation of both tires with my pressure gauge. The rims, same as the front. Cracks, dents, illegal welds. Checking all 10 lug nuts will be the same as that front axle. No uh, missing lug nuts, cracked lug nuts, cracks radiating from the holes, any rust trails from the lug nuts indicating a loose lug nut. And of course I have an axle seal here. Make sure the, all the bolts are in place and I don't have any oil in my wheel indicating I have an axle seal leak. As I roll through, I have my spring, I mean my spring, my uh, mud flap hanger. My mud flap is, is secured to the vehicle with its pins. The mud flap is bolted on. I do have nice DOT tape on the back here. And the mud flap itself is full. It's not ripped or torn anyway. It has full length and full width to catch any debris coming out of the tires. As I pull in here, I'll be checking my brake drums and brake lining, the same as I did the front axle. I'll be checking the brake chambers back here. I have a dual chamber back here though. Make sure both chambers are securely mounted to the truck, the clamps are in place, and there's dent, no dents or cracks to these chambers because these spring chambers can rust out and they start cracking and the spring wants to come out of them. So I'm gonna check the actual hoses going to them. They're all nice and tight and secure as far as the connections. The, uh, they have nice uh, attachments to keep the hoses from rubbing on each other and a dry rod or a crack. I would check for leaks in these hoses and chambers. If I build air pressure up the governor cutoff and push in my yellow button, that allowed me to listen for air leaks out of the uh, emergency side of hoses and chamber. And if I put my foot on the brake, service brake, it allowed me to listen for any air, air leaks coming out of my service lines or chambers. And while I have that yellow button pushed in with proper air pressure, I can come back here and I can pull on my slack adjuster and I shouldn't have that one inch of play. Plus I can check the push rod and slack adjuster for cracks or bends and all the proper hardware is holding the slack adjuster and push rod together and the, and the actual slack adjuster has been lubricated. 
as you can see under here, I can see my U-bolts now better. The U-bolts are nice and tight because I have all the nuts holding it to the axle plate. They're all tight. There's no cracks to the U-bolts whatsoever. We already talked about the springs and the hangers while we were on the other side. I can see, still see my cross members going all the way through. They're all in place intact and not cracked or bent. Checking my lenses back here. The lenses, the outside reflector is not cracked or broken or faded. Um, the actual lenses themselves, there's no holes or cracks in it. There's no water inside. They're all nicely red. They're not faded at all. So come down to the actual coupling now. I'm gonna start with my base of my airlines. Airlines should be secure to the actual vehicle. Uh, no leaking whatsoever in the airlines. The airlines should be not tangled up. Should not be rubbing on the catwalk like this electrical line is. There should be no kinks to the airlines, no holes. Should be no, you should not be able to see the webbing in here, meaning they're all uh, getting old and dry rotted. I'll check electrical cable is secured in, which it is. I do have a cut in it here, so I'd have to make sure it's not gonna short out, get replaced, get this tied up better. And it is connected into the trailer right here, nice and secure as far as pushed in, not gonna fall out. In my all my glad hands are nice and tight to the, the connections, no cracks in them. And of course, make sure they're well secured to the vehicle not to create a leak. And if I were to pull them apart, I would check the glad hand seals. They're not ripped, torn, or dry rotted. I'm gonna check both glad hands the same. Coupling area started it. So I'm gonna continue the coupling area. So start with the air hoses through to the glad hands. I'm gonna check my apron here. Apron should be nice and flat. Should not be excessively wavy. It should not have excessive structural rust to it. Um, no cracks in it. Make sure there's no daylight between the actual apron and the fifth wheel. No daylight whatsoever. It should be sitting right on top of each other. The fifth wheel itself should be well greased. Plenty of grease on it. It should have the pivot pin here and the lock bolt in place to keep in the fifth wheel to the actual chassis itself. I'm gonna check the platform that it sits on. This whole big steel plate under the fifth wheel. The platform itself is not cracked or bent in any way. Um, it's not wavy or excessively rusted out, and of course, uh, not been illegally welded on, make sure it's been repaired properly. All the mounting bolts on the top and the sides here that hold this platform down to the frame, make sure they're all in place. There's no cracked bolts, missing bolts, or any bolts may be loose or shavings or any rust trails leading from any of the bolts whatsoever. As I roll through, I'll roll to the back here, and I'll check my kingpin in the, lot, in the throat of the fifth wheel here. Make sure my kingpin here is not cracked or bent if I can see more of it. And the locking jaws here are actually around the shank part of the kingpin holding the uh, fifth wheel to the kingpin trailer to the truck. So I roll into the seat form, the trailer itself. I'll check the actual top light, proper color amber, not cracked or fade. I have two of them up there, there's no water inside. I am missing my amber reflector down here, so I'd have that replaced before I drove on the on the road. The hitter board itself, there's no uh, holes in it, there's no uh, missing rivets, there's no obvious dents, or I do have a little dent to it, no obvious uh, structural problems that would make my cargo deteriorate or lose my cargo or lose the trailer itself. This trailer is pretty bad. All right, my DOT tape, you want to silence the phone, please? Thank you. The UT tape itself is uh, really bad shape. There's no uh, red reflective part of it whatsoever or silver, so that has to be replaced. I would check down the whole side of my trailer for any missing rivets. Down the side, I would indicate maybe I have a missing cross member. These cross members are all pretty bad. They're all rusted out and nasty. This trailer is not structurally sound. They'll probably put load in, but that's what you're looking for. Any missing or cracked or broken as far as bent cross members, anybody hit something. I'll check my landing gear here. Landing gear should be securely to the vehicle. No uh, nuts or bolts missing anywhere. No cracks to the weld if it's welded. The landing gear should be nice and sturdy so it holds the trailer up. Should have some kind of foot attached to it on both sides, either a wheel or a foot or something on the actual leg. Should be all the way up. And of course the handle should be locked in place. As I roll down, I'll continue to look through all my cross members and side rails, make sure there's no damage to my side rails which is the frame of the trailer. My reflector here is in poor condition. It means it's cracked, it's faded, it's got chunks missing from it. That needs to be replaced. But I do have a corresponding amber light up top. It's not cracked, faded, or any water inside. And we'll check for operation that like we do on the other lights in the external light check. Coming down here to my 
frame area of my trailer. There's no cracks, no illegal welds, any parts of the frame. I do, this is a sliding tandem, so I make sure the pins, I got one on the front, one on the rear, and two on the other side are all out, and the handle's pushed in, indicating that it's locked in place and it won't go sliding out the back of my trailer. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rear axle on this one. It's easier to see. I got a front hanger here, and I have a rear hanger. I make sure these hangers are securely mounted with all the welds. There's no cracked welds anywhere. There's no cracks in the actual hanger, and the hanger's not been hit, bent from any road debris. These do have torque arms, just like the drive axles do. They're not bent or cracked in any way. The bolts are attached to the hanger and the axle, and there's no bushing squeezing out of those. If I could see better, make sure the bushings weren't coming out. I've got two tires here, same as my drive tires. No less than 230 seconds of tread, condition, pressure. You'll check for all that for bulges, cuts, dry rot, same as those tires. And you'll check your tire pressure on your valve stems. I have a valve stem here and a valve stem under here. Valve stem caps should be there. They should be nice and tight and not leaking air. And of course, caps on them. I'll be checking the actual rims, the same as those rims, any cracks, dents, any legal welds. But these have spacers in here. I'll check the spacers in place. I will look between the wheels, make sure I see no daylight between the spacer and the rim itself. This is the, race. the spacer has not been rusted out. And of course, there's no foreign objects between the tires, the same as the front chocks, uh, rocks, baby skulls, you know, homeless people. I do have Dayton spoke wheels since I have the spacer, so I check all 10 lug nuts, five inner and five outer lug nuts, the same as yellow lug nuts, not loose, cracked, missing, rust trails. Make sure the actual wedges are nice and tight, indicating that my outside lugs are probably tight. The wedges should be nice and uh, firm in there. Make sure there's no oil leaking in here from the axle hub seal here. I do have some seepage. I'd have to check this out, make sure it was a go key to drive on the road. I had fluid in here before I drove it, but I don't have any large leakage in here. As I roll down, we're gonna go up under the vehicle and check some brakes and stuff. All right, so now I can see my leaf springs under here. They're nicely stacked on top of each other, not misaligned or cracked or missing. The U-bolts themselves are not cracked or loose. They're nice and tight. I can see the nuts are uh, against the axle plate here, meaning they're uh, firmly in place. I can see my airlines. I have should have uh, two airlines going to each chamber. They're not cracked, dry rotted. They're not rubbing on anything and creating a hole. I've got the dual chambers back here. Spring and service, two clamps in place on each chamber. Not dented or cracked and the chambers themselves are nice and secure to the vehicle. I check those for leaks on the lines or chambers. I can get inside the truck. Once again, build air pressure 120, make sure the red button is pushed in and put the hand valve down. That'll, then I can come back here and listen for leaks on my emergency and service side, leaving the yellow button out to secure the vehicle. I have a push rod and slack adjuster coming out of here. Both of them should not be bent or cracked, well secured to the tractor on the, on the uh, slack adjuster, well lubricated, and the proper hardware holding them together. Checking the actual brake linings and drum, I see a large gap between these. That's not looking good, plus these slack adjusters are way at a bad angle. So I don't even know these are pulled for one inch. I think these brakes are, are not operable. So I'd have to really check this trailer out before we drove it because this gap on the actual brake lining is not good to the drum. Drum should not be cracked or chunks missing or there should be no contamination on these like the other ones. But we obviously have a, a problem with the brakes here we'd have to diagnose first. But remember these slack adjusters shouldn't pull no more than one inch. And right now they're actually way past what that a one inch pull would be. So that would be something we'd have to fix before the truck is even driven. Now I got a red reflector back here. It's a little faded, we'll have it replaced. Corresponding red light, not cracked or faded itself, should be red. Mud flat, it's well secured to the truck, it's not loose at all. The bolts are all in place, and the, and the mud, um, uh, mud flap or splash guard, whatever you want to call it, is good length and width, it's not ripped or torn in the center. As I come down, I'll be checking the three lights in the center of the truck, proper color red, not faded, cracked at all. We'll check for operation a little bit. The water inside as well as these lights. A little faded on the lenses here, but the reflectors are nicely brand new. I like those blue reflectors. Now this door is pretty hideous and damaged, so we wouldn't open it for sure. This truck's not roadworthy, I would say. But you can see how the hinges are not secured to the door door panel itself, and you would make sure all the pins are in place on all your doors, so the door wouldn't fall off and slam you in the head. Of course, you would open the door and check for operation of the door open and close.
We do not have any DOT tape on the back of this trailer. It should be on the bumper, back rail, and some across the top of the trailer. So the truck really needs some serious help. As we come down this side of the vehicle, anything unique or different over here, we'd be checking out. But there's nothing unique or different on this side of the truck. We already talked about our exhaust. The government doesn't care about your battery box because most trucks you can't find it. Our air tank, securely mounted, government doesn't care. All right, you want to jump on in. I'm going to actually come on out here. We're going to do an external light operations check, sir. So, stand in the front of the vehicle. I'm going to do my front lights first. So, I'm going to do an external light check on all the lights. So, I'll do my front. See the light flashing over here now. Okay, good. All right, Mr. Examiner, can you see my light is burning nice and bright right here and a little side light? That's working good. Can you go to my back of my tractor, please? And can you tell me if my tail lights are working? Are my tail lights working, sir? One of them. One of them. Okay, we got to get one replaced. Thank you. My left indicator or my right indicator? How about my four way flashers? Great. Now we're going to apply the brake pedal. Does my brake lights work? Good. Thank you. Can you see if the center light of my trailer is working? Nope. Nope. Okay. Okay. I get that replaced. How about the red light on top in the back? Nope. All right. A little light we got to get fixed. Can you go to the rear of my trailer, please? And are my tail lights operating on the back of my trailer? Great. How about my left indicator? So I'm going to turn the key on, and my ABS light and my DEF light both are on, and they go off. Good. All right, that's they're working properly. I'm going to turn the lights on. Put my high beam indicator on. Is working on the dash. Good. I see the blue light. I'm going to turn my left indicator on, my right indicator on, and my four-way flashers are on. I'm going to check the mirrors themselves. The mirror should be well adjusted for me to see down both sides of the vehicle when I'm sitting in the seat. The windscreen, windshield, bug catcher, bug deflector, whatever you want to call it, is not cracked. There's no illegal stickers, nothing blocking my view of any navigation units. Uh, no illegal, uh, uh, you know, delamination or cloudiness of the windshield. I can see the actual wiper blades. They're nicely against the windshield here. I don't see any wiper blades that are deteriorated, rotten, or cut, or falling off. So it'd be safe to use my wipers. I'm gonna check the actual seat belt here. Seat belts uh, latches properly. There's a secure to the chassis, top and bottom. There's no cuts or frays. And it's not bent. Oh, I'm sorry, not bent. It's not cut or frayed or, or ripped in any way. My fire extinguisher is down here on the floor. It's securely mounted, which it is. It's not moving around. The needle is in the green, which means it's fully charged. I have three reflective triangles. The box isn't secure. We put it somewhere where it wouldn't fly around, possibly. And I should have three triangles that stand up and reflect light. And somewhere within the vehicle should be some spare fuses. In case I burn out a fuse in route or if I have circuit breakers, click them all. Make sure they're all in the on position like your house. All right. I'm going to turn the wipers on since the truck's off nice and quiet. I have wipers moving. Awesome. I'm going to push in the switch and the actual wipers should wash what there are. Some trucks have it on the dash. You rotate. Check the horns. 
horns all work nicely. All right, we're gonna do a safe start now. So I can do build up my air pressure and do a CDL air leak test. Safe start, clutch in halfway, vehicle neutral. Fire the truck up. Oil pressure immediately starts climbing. I've got good oil pressure above 60. We're good range there. My bulk gauge is low around 12. It should be about 13 and a half to 14 and a half. So we'll let that climb, make sure it builds up before I drive it. Water temp, it's cold. It should be about 170, 200. That's a normal range for some trucks. My air gauges here are climbing. Make sure it gets to the governor cutoff, 125, 130. I do need some fuel and my DEF is quarter tank. I need to get some DEF soon. I'm gonna check my defroster. Air should come up on the top here. Good, here it comes. There's the air, nice. Now I'll click to the bottom and front vents. We got air coming out here. And if I turn it to the heat section, the, the red, when the vehicle gets up the temperature, I should feel heat coming out my top and bottom vents. There's my governor cutoff. So now I know I've reached the proper air pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the truck off. Turn the key back on, push in my red and yellow buttons. And I'm gonna let the air pressure settle. So as it's filling up the whole unit, letting the pressure settle out. Of course, as a real driver, I should have my registration, insurance cards on truck and trailer, any bills I need, any kind of documentation I need. Have all that with me in the vehicles before I leave. License plate should be on the trucks. Government doesn't care about that, but you guys should be checking that already. All right, settling out, it's passing 100 as it's settling. I can hear the air stop moving through the valves. So it's pretty much settled out about 98, 99 pounds. Now I'm gonna apply the foot brake. By the way, I'm not losing any, I don't need any air leaks right now. They'd be coming on my emergency side. I'm gonna apply the foot pedal right now and I'm gonna let it settle again. So now if I hear any air leaks coming now, it'd be coming from my service side. So I don't hear any leaks. Air pressure settling out right about 80 pounds because I see the center line is 75. So it's about 80 pounds now. So I'll start counting for one complete minute, 60 seconds or 60 beeps. And you will count or have a stopwatch or use your phone really quick. Count. So 60 beeps, I should not lose no more than four PSI. If I lose four PSI or more, truck is no good. Or hear any audible air leaks, which I don't have any. So we're gonna pat pretend we've gone a full minute. <laughs> Sir, I've not lost any air. It stayed steady at 80 pounds truck safe to drive on that portion now I'm gonna fan the brake pedal at 55 or above on both gauges my low air warning light or indicator should come on both of them came on right at the real little red lines which is about 65 psi so my low air warning lights are working properly uh, so now I'm gonna keep fanning the brake pedal until approximately 40 psi which is between the, the 25 and the 50 line, both buttons should pop out. Okay, they both popped out, one at 40, one about 30, both within spec, that's approximately 40. Now I'm gonna go ahead and half clutch again, vehicle neutral, and fire vehicle up, build air pressure back to 125 or governor cutoff, and that completes my air leak test. At this point, I'm gonna unchock the front wheel of the chalk, please. Unchock that front wheel of the wheel. All right, and let the air pressure build up.
right, she's building up close to Governor Cutoff. I'm gonna do my parking brake test now. Put it in first gear. Using my clutch brake, not grinding the gears. I'm gonna push in my red button, leave my yellow button out, which I'm testing my tractor spraying parking brakes. I'll give it a slight tug. All right, so I know the truck's holding nicely. Pull my red out, push in my yellow. I'm gonna give a nice little tug, testing my trailer spring parking brakes. Oh, it's not holding me. It means my brakes are bad. I have no parking brakes on this trailer. So I need to get that fixed before it's driven. Push in the red button anyway. I'm gonna roll forward a few more feet. Clutch in, hit the brakes. The truck should stop with my brake pedal and the wheel should not pull left or right, indicating I have an out of adjustment front brake. 